y'all and welcome back to my channel. My name is Misty and of course the channel's name is Speculative Magpie and we are here to do a book tag. We're doing a book tag instead of a book review because I have misplaced the book that I wanted to review. It's around here somewhere. I can't find it so we're gonna do this. Um, we're going on an adventure book tag. It's a Lord of the Rings book tag and I had to do it. So, uh, yeah, there's like nine prompts, so we're going to go through them and we're going to do that. So starting off, I got pulled up on the computer here, so I'll be glancing over there. And then over here where all my books are piled. <laughs> so yeah, that's going to be me going back and forth for a little bit. So the first prompt is Frodo. I will take the ring to Mordor, a book you're not quite sure if you liked or not. That one is Last Call at the Nightshade Lounge. Now, I didn't like this book, but I kind of like this book. It's a confusing book to like. It's got a really cool premise. So what the premise is, is bartenders protect us from like demons. Okay. Um, and how they do it is they mix the perfect drink. And these drinks give us superpowers like um, let me see if I can find one real quick uh, no I don't know all right planters punch a libation of lightning so what the planters punch drink does is it lets you shoot lightning out of your hands and then like um, the gold rush the bridge a beverage to a bridge the abyss between the minds, telepathy. And so you make these drinks in the perfect proportions and they give you uh, superpowers. And what you do is you go on smoke breaks and those smoke breaks, you patrol your area. Your area is in between bars. So that's what you do. And you go out and you fight these demons from fighting, um, from har harming regular folk. Now, not all bartenders are these protectors. Um, the way you become a protector is you mix these perfect drinks and you're kind of let in on the, you know, the secret. Well, the main character's name is Bailey Chan and I didn't like her at all because she was just bitchy and just mean. Um, she has recently graduated from college. She moved back home um, and she's just trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life. So her friend from high school um, gets her a job as a bar back at his uncle's bar. And the friend that gets her the job used to have a huge crush on her and she was just hateful to him. Well, she comes back and finds out that he now has a girlfriend and she's like insanely jealous. And, you know, the boyfriend isn't much better, kind of like, well, you know, I still kind of like you, but I'm in love with my girlfriend. Um, and it's just kind of annoyed with all the characters, but the premise was cool. And I just really, I mean, I, I don't need to like the main characters, but I kind of want to like the main characters. So if this book continued, I would definitely read it. This is definitely like a 3.5 stars book. Um, it was just a lot of fun. And the cool thing, oh, and I forgot to mention, um, baristas, people that make coffee, they can be um, uh, healers. So they make the perfect coffee and for the bartenders that get hurt fighting the bad guys. And it, it, it's a neat book. I kind of enjoyed it, but meh, I mean, I don't know. So yeah, this one's still on my shelf because I kind of liked it. All right, and the next one I c is Sam. I can't carry it, but I can carry you, a book you will always be loyal to. Um, well, that's going to be the Gentleman Bastard series, The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch. A lot of people don't like this series or this book, but I love this series. I think it's awesome. I think they're, it's, it's just wonderful. It's like definitely one of my favorite series. And yeah, 
if you're mean to this book, you're gonna hurt my feelings. So please don't be mean to this book. <laughs> um, let's see. Pippin. What about Second Breakfast? A book that you want to reread. Um, well, I don't know why, but I am really amping up for Lord of the Rings. Is like, so I wanna like reread The Lord of the Rings. This is a leather bound um, collection of The Lord of the Rings plus The Hobbit that I got my husband for uh, Christmas one year. I really want to read them, but I don't want to reread this book series because they're like tiny, really small, and it's like Bible thin pages, and I'm afraid I'd hurt it. So I want to get me another set of Lord of the Rings books and reread them. Ooh, ooh, maybe I can ask for that for my birthday. That would be cool. Um, so yeah, I really like right now at this time want to reread. Um, the whole Lord of the Rings series and the Similian and all the others because yeah that's what I want to do right now um, Mary we're 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 going with you Frodo a book about friendship all right Arrowwood by Mick Finley this is a series about um, takes place at the same time as Sherlock Holmes and Arrow would consider himself a contemporary of Sherlock Holmes, although Sherlock Holmes has no idea who he is. Um, and he hates Sherlock Holmes, despises the man. But um, Arrowwood is a poor man's detective. You know, Sherlock takes care of all the upper class. If you have a problem and um, you're poor, you go to Arrowwood. And he also has his own Dr. Watson and just the, he, he, he pays doc, he pays his Dr. Watson, which I can't really remember what the man's name was. It's been a while since, since I've seen, seen it, um, since I've read it, but his, the, the friendship between Arrowwood and his own Dr. Watson is just awesome. Um, they do everything f together for each other. And it's just a really good, a really good friendship. I mean, there's definitely, definitely a little class difference there. Cause his Dr. Watson is like a former street urgent and Arrowwood is like a down on his luck, um, I won't say noble, but like middle class kind of guy. So, but they definitely care about each other. There's times where um, Arrowwood's Dr. Watson puts himself in extreme danger for Arrowwood and Arrowwood does the same. Um, Arrowwood doesn't look down on his Dr. Watson like you would figure most people from middle to upper class would at that time. Arrowwood genuinely genuinely cares about the people that he ha considers friends. He uses one little errand boy that he literally goes and rescues because he feels responsible for him. So yeah, th this book is just a book about two really good men and the trouble that they get into each other because they do have higher than average morals about right and wrong, not necessarily yeah, it's, it's just a really good story. And there's about three books in this series. And I recommend you pick them up because they're well written. I really enjoyed them. Um, Aragon, for Frodo, a book with a hero or heroine to swoon over. Now, everybody knows the, uh, the first book in this series, Howl's Moving Castle. And you gotta love Howl. He's egotistical but charming and he's sweet but mean he's just you know like the whole package when it comes so yeah I think if you read this book and you read the second book Hal is definitely worth swooning over especially the second book takes place after spoiler alert he and Sophie get married so yeah this is a really good book 
and Hal's just awesome in this. And Sophie is a total badass. Who doesn't love Sophie in Hal's Moving Castle? Um, let's see. Legolas, a book that still only counts as one. The biggest book on my TBR. Well, this is where I kind of cheat. It's not the biggest book in page count, but it's the biggest book in reputation. It's Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson, and it is the first book in the Malazan series. And this book is a behemoth. Um, it's just reputation. It's like, you know, people are like, you read fantasy and you read epic fantasy and people are like, yeah, but have you read the Malazan series? And you're like, no. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, this book has the first five pages are like uh, maps. And then there's a lexicon in the book back and... I'm just not ready to start this one yet. Uh, it's it's coming. I'm going to start it soon. Um, so yeah, the Malazan series, the biggest intimidation on my to be read cart at this time. Let's see. Gimli, shall I get you a box? A short but fun read. A Banquet of Hungry Ghosts. This is just a book of short stories based around the Hungry Ghost Month and food. And it was a lot of fun. Um, it wasn't very scary, very atmospheric. But um, it's been a while since I read this. I got it as a gift and I keep seeing it on my, on my bookshelf in my living room. And I'm like, I really enjoyed that book. I think I want to pick it up. Don't know when I'm going to do it. I'm just going to put it back out there and eventually I'll probably pick it up. But yeah, this book um, definitely is uh, one that I want to read again soon. All right. Boromir. They've taken the little ones. A series you never made it past the first book. That's going to be uh, Mercedes Lackey, The Fire Rose. This is the first book in her retelling of fairy tales. She's got like, you know, eight or nine at this point in time, probably more, because she's done Sherlock, she's done Peter Pan, Cinderella, all kinds of different ones. And this was a really good book. This is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, takes place in San Francisco. I thoroughly enjoyed this book. It was awesome. Um, it it was just really good. The heroine, Belle, was... Uh, no, her name is Rosalind. But, you know, Belle. Um, she just was very independent. And the beast, while tragic and kind of, you know, grumpy, wasn't horrible. I mean, he's just a cursed magician that needs help. I mean, what are you going to do? So yeah, this was a really good book. Um, I never made it past because I just never got the other books. Um, I do enjoy Mercedes Lackey. I read her when I was younger and I'll probably eventually pick her up. I They did make the um, Last Herald Mage into an omnibus. It's my favorite series that she's written is uh, the Last Herald Mage. So I'll probably pick that up eventually. Might give that one a, re a reread, so. Yep. And Gandalf. Um, all we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. A book that made you think about your life, the universe, and everything once you finished it. That would... This is killing me. I have this book somewhere, but I can't lay my hands on it. It's Moonheart by Charles DeLint. I read that book when I was 16. Um, Charles DeLint writes urban fantasy. He's a Canadian author. And he writes really strong female leads. Like really strong female leads. And it's basically um, Taliesin and the female lead have to stop um, these evil fairies from taking over the world, basically. And they go back and forth between the timelines. 
between our world and the green world, the fey, the fey world. And that book was just, I don't know if it was because I read it so young and I still have those nostalgic memories of it, but just that, just the way the characters were written and the world that they were in, I really, really wanted to be in that world. I wanted to be with those characters in that world, experiencing that story while they were doing it. I've really never, never read anybody else that has made me feel that way than Charles DeLint. And I've read a lot of Charles DeLint's books. Charles DeLint has made me break down sobbing within the first page of a book. Um, he's just such a great writer. He is my favorite writer. And I love, I haven't read a Charles DeLint book that I haven't loved. So yeah, those are my, we're going on an adventure books for a Lord of the Rings tag, which is just something that I'm really into right now. So I'm probably going to go watch the movies, see if I can find me some books on eBay maybe to purchase. And yeah, that's it. I'm probably going to do another tag later today, um, that newbie book tag, just so I can have a cute little intro video for my um, channel page, like a lot of y'all do. So, <laughs> all right. So thank you for watching my tag and I will talk to you next time. And one does not simply walk into Mordor. Bye-bye. Talk to you later.